God bless you, family of God. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And we're here on the Morning Devo once again, together, together, together. Amen. This topic right here is a little heavy, at least for me, because it looks like to me when you read it, just reading it without, you know, the proper understanding of the scripture, we're going to be in Titus chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. It seems like if you just read it like that out of context, you have to take it out of context to get where I'm coming from. Um, and we're going to take it in context. Uh, and the Lord is going to help us. But it seems like it's a dividing going on among the people. And it seems like Titus is being told by the apostle Paul, it looks like to me, I could be wrong, to be done with some people like turn away from them like have nothing more to do with them out of the scripture I know the world does that all the time if I say something wrong to somebody and they feel offended they're going to be like we don't want nothing to do with you Sam anymore we don't want you, nothing to do with your ministry. We don't want nothing to do with your church. We don't want nothing to do with your God. And go. it goes on and on and on. But the scripture seems to me, this morning, today, when we read it, it seems like we're the people that are saying, we don't want no more parts of you. Could that be true? The Bible says, have nothing more to do with them. Sounds like division, right? How hard... Is it to do this? How hard is it for you and me to do this? And if you're like me, you're like, wait a minute, I, you know, I don't want to do that. You know, I want unity. I don't want people to be divided. Uh, we could work this out. That's the type of attitude I have. Amen. But is this whole gospel thing message about attitude and my feelings, or is it about truth? Is it about God's word? Is it about deliverance? Is it about um, the word? Or is it about how I feel about things? Or is it about faith and trusting in the word that was inspired by God? By all the you know authors were inspired by God to write what they wrote down. Which one is it? Amen. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, listen, don't hesitate to leave them on the live stream. If you're listening from the podcast, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother Sam Lopez once again. Sister Joanne, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you, my sister, my friend. Let's do this. Let's share this out for 60 seconds. But before that, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that God will reveal what he wants to reveal to us today. I don't want to get in the way of this. This could be a little bit tricky if I'm diving in this scripture with my feelings That's why I always say, you don't have to feel God to believe in God. Amen. We have to have faith that God is real and he is real. And then we will feel what he wants us to feel when it comes to his word, when it comes to his kingdom, when it comes to his promises, when it comes to his presence. Amen. I don't have to feel my way through my faith. I have to believe in what the word says and apply what the word says in real time to see if the word is true. And in my experience, I don't know about you, in my experience, every time I apply the word in my current situation, I apply it in my life real time, the word of God proves itself to be true. And the word of God is alive and active. The word of God, you speak the word of God, it doesn't go through the air and down to the ground, or it doesn't bounce off the person and come back to you void. Better yet, it doesn't come to the The word of God does not come to God void. It doesn't come back to God and say, oh, it didn't work. The word of God is powerful, active, alive, sharpened at any double-edged sword. And the word of God is able to do what the word of God says it would do. And today, um, it's the same. Today, we're going to speak on what God spoke. And we're going to repeat what the word says. There's nothing more I could do with the word of God. It's just repeat it, apply it. Activate it, receive it, believe it, trust it, and see the word of God move for itself. Amen. Brother Huli, God bless you. It's good to see you. Blessings to you, my friend and my brother. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. We're going to be in Titus chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Let's pray. After we pray, 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, right now is the time to do it all, all through the live stream. Um, don't hesitate. Even if I'm not live when you're watching this or hearing this, leave your question, comment, concern, or prayer request, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So we're going to be in Titus 3, 10, and 11. We'll pray. After we pray, we'll share this out for uh, 60 seconds to as many people that come to your mind. We'll share it out, and then when we come back, we'll dive into it. So Father God, I thank you, Lord God, <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that your word speaks. Your word always spoke, and your always word always speaks, and I thank you for your word. I thank you for your knowledge, your wisdom, your your teaching power, giving us understanding, giving us wisdom of how to navigate life when it comes to people who, you know, are are turning away from the truth. Father God, help us all not to turn away from your truth. Help us all to be united in your faith and your love and your grace and your mercy. Help us to be united in your word. Help us not to be divided by circumstances by idolatry, by things that lead people astray. Help us to be clear of those things and help us to unite and help us to believe more and more and more and have faith more and more in what you're saying and what you're doing and in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, for the gospel's sake. I pray I had your protection over every single person that's connected right now in the powerful name of Jesus. I speak life to the bodies right now that are feeling illness in their bodies. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak, Lord God, that we will have the eyes to see, ears to listen, and be a mouthpiece for the gospel message to go throughout the whole earth in the powerful, holy name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you would teach us, show us, remove me, and show up. In this morning, Devo, so that way we could get a clear understanding of what you told Titus in chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. I pray all of this by faith, knowing that you hear the prayers of the righteous, and the prayers of the righteous availeth much. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. 60 seconds when we come back, share this out. If you know somebody right now that does not have social media, and they don't intend to get on social media for whatever reason, send them straight um, to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Right there, they have their own website, their own Bible, their own live chat, a place where they can request prayer, a place where they can follow me on my socials and subscribe to the podcast and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All they got to do is sign up. It takes less than 40 seconds and it's a one and done deal. Once they sign in once, amen, they'll be good forever as long as their site is up. Amen. So I'll be right back after these 60 seconds. Wow, 60 seconds goes by so fast. Let's get into the word, amen? Welcome back. Titus chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. I'm going to put it on the screen. If you're listening, I'm going to read it out loud. If you're watching, I want us to see what the word is saying as well as I'm reading what the word is saying, amen? Because um, if we could easily take this out of context and um, you'll go around posting and sharing this and saying, Oh, Sam said that we should be divided, that we should just turn away from people. Um, And, you know, your brother Sam, if you know me, you know I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying what the word says. Amen. Let's get into it. Nothing more. Titus 3, 10 and 11. The Bible says clearly, if people are causing divisions among you, right, give a first and second warning. First and second warning. Not just say, okay, you're causing division. 
you're out of here. Don't come back. You give a first and second warning. After that, after those warnings, amen, and that's grace right there. And we, the church, the body of Christ, we should be showing grace. And giving people, all people, a benefit of the doubt. And treat all people with respect and dignity. And look at them as the creation of God. After that, have nothing more to do with them. Verse 11. For people like that, who've been warned first and second time, and they're still causing divisions. People like that have turned away from the truth. And their own sins condemn them. Very important. I'm not condemning you. The word of God is not condemning you. Jesus is not condemning you. The church is not condemning you. Listen, if you're a person that's causing divisions and you've been warned about it once, twice, and you're still doing the division, the dividing, you're going to be done with. People are going to know that you have turned away from the truth and your own sins, ladies and gentlemen, your own sins condemn you. Uh, I'm pausing for effect because I'm like, that's that's a lot right there. That is a lot. That's powerful. And it's the word of God. So I'm not saying, listen, those people, them over there, them, those, whatever pronouns they're using now. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if people, I'm saying what the scripture is saying. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, move today. Remove me. Remove my feelings Because when I first read this, I was in my feelings. I was like, nah, that's not right. Imagine me telling God what's right and what's wrong. My feelings, the flesh will start acting up. Because it's like, like, is, is God telling us to be divided? No. The word says, if people are causing division. So that means someone in the crowd, someone in the congregation, someone in your family, someone in your workspace, someone at school is always causing like problems and dividing people. And the men's group last night, um, we were talking about Peter and Paul when they had a disagreement when it came to being a hypocrite. Apostle Paul told Apostle Peter that he was a hypocrite because when certain people would be around, he would be cool with them. But then the other group of people would come around, he would, you know, act different. Like hypocrisy was going on. And because hypocrisy was going on, some people were going ahead and, you know, following the hypocrisy of Peter at that time. So Apostle Paul said, I got to correct this and I'm going to correct them publicly. There was no warning. There was, you know, Apostle Paul read about him. He'll, he'll let you know. He'll either come with a whip, he said, or he'll come with a gentle spirit. Which one do you want? In this case, the apostle is telling um, young Titus, listen, if people are causing divisions, you need to handle that. Don't let that fester. Because if you okay it, if you say nothing, it's like you're okaying it. If I saw a whole bunch of nonsense going on, and I don't say anything about the nonsense, I'm okaying it. And the people might think, oh, Sam knows. He's okay with it, though. Sam knows all everything. He's all right with it. Um, No. The Bible says, have nothing more to do with them, those people. Amen. If I'm not careful, I could be part of those people. But those people that cause division. I'm going to do what the word says. I suggest you do what the word says. Go up to those people. Give them a first warning. Say, listen, man, what you're doing is not right. Let's look at the scripture. Um, what is the problem? What is the issue? How can I help you? Are you feeling rejected? What's going on in your life? You want to talk about it? You want me to bring the elders of the church? You want me to you know, bring another brother in the situation or a sister in the situation? What do you want? But let me just warn you. This is the first time you know, I'm seeing this. I believe we could get through this. Amen. Let me just warn you. If you keep on doing that, it's going to cause us to be divided. You don't want the vision, right? That's the first warning. That's how I would approach it. Say like a week or two goes by and you see the same thing happening with the same amount of people, same among the same people, and people are being divided. Um, you go with a second warning. Say, man, I know we spoke about this before. Maybe we bring like a leader so that where they, you know, we could really talk about this 
or, or more clear, you want to go to, you know, have coffee or tea or whatever, or, or have lunch and let's talk about it. And then you go, you have that conversation and it's the second warning, warning with love. My personality is my personality. You might have another way of warning people. Amen. It's all, you know, that part has to do with your personality, how you're going to um, apply this word in a situation. Um, second warning comes a week or two, you revisit it, it's still happening. Then that's when you have to make a decision. How hard is it to make this decision? To me, it's a little hard. I'm not going to lie about it. It'll be a little hard for me to just do this next part. After that, have nothing to do with them. That's tough for, for me. Um, you know, because I don't, I know, I don't, I want to, I don't want to be on the receiving end of people not having to, nothing to do with me. Unless, you know, you're into something contrary of the gospel. If you're into all kind of witchcraft or debauchery, all kind of sin, and you want me to be down with that, <clears throat> I'm going to have nothing to do with you. <clears throat> so this part is hard for me. After that, have nothing more to do with them. Why? Why, Lord? Why do you? Why do we have to be divided? How, can, how come we can't just be friends and brothers and sisters in Christ and move on from this? Why? For people like that, that have turned away from the truth. People like that have turned away from the truth, the scripture says. And their own sins are condemning them. So they're condemned, walking around condemned, contrary of what the scripture says about believers, when the scripture clearly says that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Could it be, ladies and gentlemen, that some people are not in Christ Jesus? They're into some kind of religion. They're into some kind of um, you know, behavior that looks Christian, but is really not. They're not in the fellowship. They're not in Christ. So their own sins are condemning them. Isn't that something? Being condemned by our own sins when we've been cleansed and we've been forgiven for our sins by the blood of Jesus. So there's an opposing message, opposing lifestyle going on when people among you are causing divisions. And I'm not only talking about it in the church, I'm talking about your family and your life and your workplace. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So the Bible says, have nothing to do with them. Them are the people who are causing divisions among you. Amen. And if I'm not careful, I could be among those people. I'm not, you know, getting myself out of here and say, oh, I'm not, I'm not them. I have to guard my heart. I have to, you know, with trembling and fear, fear and trembling. I hope I'm saying the scripture right when it comes to, you know, guarding my own salvation, protecting my own life. Amen. Making sure I'm in the faith. I'm in Christ and I'm doing Things that are not causing division, but are causing people to be unified in Christ, in faith, in hope, in love, in grace, in mercy. And I'm not only talking about the church, because I know um, a lot of people function good in the church environment, which is great. But it's another thing to see how you're functioning outside of a church building, of a community of believers, of a small group, a connect group. How do we act outside of that environment because a lot of people say and i you know i agree that the church sometimes is a controlled environment it's being controlled right hopefully by you know the presence of god that's the ultimate control that's going on amen and the ability to be in spirit with one another in christ with one another but how about if there's people that are trying to do their own thing within the community, causing divisions, and they're trying to have a controlled environment that way. Um, people will tend to flock towards other people who seem to have the most influence, even in the church. And I don't know why I'm whistleblowing right now on the church. The church, capital C, universal, right? The church in general. But the body of Christ, that's why I'm saying you know, we play around with words. The kingdom of God. Uh, and then people automatically say that's the church. And that's not true. Read the scriptures. Kingdom of God has something to do with the governing um, power of God over his people and his kingdom. Because if the kingdom of God was the church, then all churches will say they're 
the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God and the church and the body of Christ. If you look a little closely into it, instead of just listening, even to what I say sometimes, look at the scriptures and get a clearer understanding of what these terms and phrases mean. Um, so that way we could be closer, um, instead of further away from what God is originally saying in his word. So Titus 3, 10, 11, I suggest you read the whole chapter of Titus chapter 3 to make sure and certain that I'm not taking this out of context. I try already to remove my feelings. I pray that Holy Spirit will remove me from this equation because God knows that this is not my personality. I'm not the guy that has nothing to do with you. I want, I want, I'll be the guy that will go and give you a first hearing. I under, I'm trying to understand what's going on, why, what's causing the division. The first and second warning, I'm that guy. And not warning like, yo, you know, step outside. If you do that once more, you know, we're going to shoot a fair one. I'm not talking about that kind of warning. I believe the scripture is not talking about that kind of warning. I believe the warning is, listen, the, the consequence of you dividing or the consequence of us being not equally yoked or coming to an understanding of this, the consequences will mean that it's going to be a, a turning away, a dividing of people. And um, we will have to say that someone, either me or you, or us or them, are turning away from the truth. And we don't want to turn away from the truth. And because if you turn away from the truth, your own sins will condemn you. So we're taking our feelings out of the whole equation. I'm taking my feelings out of the whole equation and saying, if you're causing divisions, amen, um, you might be turning away from the truth. So the truth of God wants us to be united. Um, the opposite applies. If you're not in the truth of God, you're going to be divided. And there's a lot of denominations, right, in, in the Christian church and Christianity, um, but we're not the only ones with different sect sections, sects, S-E-C-T-S. -E we're not the only ones. Buddhists have different sects. Um, Islam has different sects. Um, Jewish and Judaism has different sects. We're not the only one. So even though that's part of the issue when it comes to division, but it's not the whole. And we're not the only ones that have different denominations. Um, some other religions... If you want to call this a religion, they just call it by different names and it's by people. And I don't know, could it, could it be that people started causing divisions among them and then they were warned, hey, you know, you're turning away from the true faith. Like when my friends come every now and then on a Saturday, um, my friends from the Watchtower Society, you know, Jehovah Witness, um, the dividing point is Jesus and it will always be Jesus. Even though they say they're Christians, um, we're not the same. We're not believing in the same thing. We're not believing in the same Jesus. So if there's people causing divisions among me, first warning, second warning, let's look at the scripture. Let's come to some kind of understanding. Um, you know, what does it say in your Bible? You know, stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, after the first and second warning, they'll come, they'll leave notes in my mailbox. Um notes like three four or five page of notes handwritten by the people who came originally or maybe by their elders saying why i was wrong and why i'm wrong about jesus being god and everything it's happened so many times um after that the bible is clear I have nothing more to do with them for people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them um so that might be the reason why they come to my door, they come happy, and they leave a little bit angry or disturbed because I'm not buying into um, their religion and their belief system, uh, which many born-again believers who are you know, into the word, the scholars of the word, will even go as far as to say those type of organizations, those type of groups are cults, uh, causing division among um, the word of God among the people who believe in the word and trust in the word of God causing divisions and saying um, we have the truth and you guys are infidels you don't know what you guys are talking about because we have the truth 
um, Christians, we we just, like me, I hide behind what Jesus said. He's the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. I just repeat that. It's like, I said, okay, if you're saying that we're wrong, then you have to say that Jesus is wrong. And that's tough, saying that the Lord Jesus is wrong. Uh, that's between you and the Lord. Um, but the Bible is clear. Titus 3.10 For people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins. I love it. The word of God doesn't say, and Jesus is condemning you for that. God the Father is condemning you for that. Holy Spirit God is condemning you for that. The church is condemning you for that. Sam is condemning you from that. Your apostle, your or prophet, your evangelist, your pastor, teacher are condemning you for that. It doesn't say that. It says, for people like that have turned away from their, the truth and their own sins, plural, condemn them. Why would you want to walk around condemned? That's why I think um, people are playing a lot of games with words when it comes to the message of God, to the Holy Scriptures. They're playing word games just to benefit them and they're manipulating people to believe in their divide and conquer schemes and scams, even using the word for personal gain. You know, there's this software that I use that literally tell you when I when I make my uh, mixtapes, I'm a DJ. And when I do it, I, ha- I have a software that I could tag. And I know it's going to be a little technical, but follow me. You could tag the MP3. You could tag the audio file with a picture, you know, composer. Uh, the details of the songs or the authors or the writers, the lyricists. You could, and then when you, when you post it, it tells you. If it's a free version, you can't place this everywhere. You can't, you can't um, go public with this because it's an unpaid um, subscription. But when you pay for it, you can plaster it everywhere, use it for your own personal gain. Amen? So people are actually trying to make other people pay for their revelation so that way you could go public with it. It's for your own gain. When you have a free gospel, amen, it shouldn't be for anybody's own gain. It should be for the unity of the church. And it's free. But the software that I use, like I said, for, for music, so just to have the picture connected, you know, the cover art connected with the audio um, to go public and to do business with it, you know, I have to pay for that. Isn't it, isn't it different? We don't have to pay for what Jesus already paid for to unify us, to give us the born again experience. That plan, that subscription, if you want to call it that, is free. So you could tell when people are causing divisions among you, they have a they have a different agenda. They want things according to their way of living, to their standards. They want to manipulate people. Uh, they want to try to gain for themselves from others. And they try to use the word to do it. Uh, but we need to give a first warning. Then go above the first warning. Give a second warning. Amen. Just like this. I don't I don't know why we would try to reinvent the wheel. When God is telling us. Um, through the apostle. How to deal with this situation. Um, if we do it any other way. Then we're in our feelings. We're doing it the way we feel we should do it. After that, after these warnings, and these warnings, it doesn't say, it doesn't give a time frame. It just says, look, approach the situation. And that's why this, this will bother me. If I was in my feelings right now, this would really bother me because I'm not confrontational, believe it or not. I, I want the best for everyone and everyone to be at peace with everyone. So then that causes me to be quiet because I know, as well as you know, if you're a believer, that as soon as you bring the gospel message gospel terminology, Christian um, ideas into the conversation, uh, something's going to jump off. Unless they, unless they receive what you're saying, they're going to get offended. But these people who are causing divisions among you, if they're not warned, then they're going to keep on doing it. And if you don't say anything, it's like you're condoning it. That you're part of the issue. You're part of the division. And um, God is working with me. Uh, I don't know if, what your personality is. But if your personality is one that 
man, I'm going to tell this person, even in that, be careful. You know, do it biblically. Do it after uh, a time of prayer. Amen. So you can have your words adjusted. Um, God wants us to ultimately be unified. The, the prayer that Jesus prayed, he said um, that they will be one just like he and the Father are one. He wants us to be united, not divided. But depending on your personality, I know I would have to um, kind of like force myself to say something. And I have to make sure I'm prayed up when I say it. First warning, and second warning. After that, and it doesn't sh- tell you how long you should wait or whatever. But after you've done that, and you brought leadership may be involved, got people involved, prayed with the people um, read the scripture with the people. Maybe it's something real small that the enemy is trying to use to blow up. It could be a small flame that the enemy wants to start a big fire out of it. Uh, it could be a little minor adjustment that needs to be done. A little misunderstanding. But after all of that, whatever all of that looks like, amen, have nothing to do with them. That's That's if they don't if they don't take heed to the warning or they're, you know, giving you the shoulder shrug or they don't care or they're going to keep it moving or they get even worse and they get more people to rally up against the truth of God or people like that have turned away from the truth. People like that have turned away from the truth. There's a big, huge turning from the truth right now that's happening in our generation. Like right now, if you haven't noticed it, um, that will keep you on your knees praying. That you yourself and me, myself, me and my family, uh, that we won't fall into this whole thing about uh, debunking or deconstructing the gospel or seeing what Jesus really said and getting into these communities and these, um, you know, people that are, are trying to reassess the scriptures and see what really what was really going on. The Bible is already written. The word of God has been spoken Spirit of God is moving. We are not the condemned ones. We are the free, born again ones. We are the chosen one. We are the called out ones. So I hope this did this, this something to your spirit, did something to your soul, did something to your mindset. Nothing more. If people are causing divisions among you, warn them first time, second time, do it with love, do it with grace, do it with mercy. After that, have nothing more to do with them. The Bible says have nothing more to do with them. And how hard is that? us to do. Titus 3, read the whole chapter for yourself. I'm out of time. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God, he's good. Peace.